it'll be a separate session. Sure. All right. So uh, no, no private talk. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know some students might be shy, but there's no reason to be shy. I mean, if you have a question, lots of people, uh, you know, <laughs> would have questions. All right. So uh, let's keep it on then. All right. So uh, uh, first come, first serve. I I have a question. It's really simple, but I just can't get it down. It's it's point nine. Uh, one B, and I know that you you just factor the top and you take out T plus three, but I don't know how you get the other part of it. Okay, zero point nine is that right? Okay. Yeah, I got the answer and I worked backwards and it's simple, but I just like I'm I don't know why my brain is can just not do like easy factoring right now. And you can tell I already worked on this with uh, with a student, so other students have asked about this too. <laughs> All right. Um, these are my answers again I need, I need the uh so that's uh oh yeah oh yeah these are the questions right and these are the answers all right yeah it's just that the questions were short all right but the solutions could be long okay so uh 0 0.9 b is, did you say b yeah b yeah yeah yeah. okay so um all right so uh, i circled the appropriate piece so this is 0 0.91 b and i circled the appropriate pieces here the key thing is the top. On the top, we have the sum of two nice what? We have t cubed and 27. Those are, bro those are both perfect cubes, right? Okay, so that's correct. The sum of two cubes. So it's a soap problem. It's a soap problem. All right. And by the way, I do welcome student uh, responses. Okay, so uh, students, any brave souls? How do you factor this? We factor it as a binomial times a trinomial. What's the nice binomial factor if you have t cubed plus 27? It's, I, I know it's t plus 3 because you want to cancel uh, the new bat numerator and, and the denominator, but I just don't know the trinomial to it. Oh, yeah. That's, I don't know that's, how to get that. That's clever strategizing as a student, uh, but I want to explain why it's legit, <laughs> right? So basically, we're taking the cube root of t cubed, right? Uh, the cube of t is t cubed. Uh, the cube root of 27 is 3, right? 3 cubed is 27. S4, why am I saying S? S4, same sign. Same sign as what's here. Okay, so you know why t plus 3 is correct. Okay, aside from the practical issue, yeah, we want to cancel, but uh, <laughs> okay. That's too practically thinking. All right, now uh, the trinomial factor here, the trinomial. Okay, so it's going to be t squared, correct? And then I want to say, O, O for what? O for the opposite sign, minus. Okay, so this here is a plus sign. This here is the opposite, the minus sign. All right. Um, right, and uh, uh, the student's correct, right? So the next piece will be 3T. You take the straight product, 3T. 3 times T is 3T. All right, whoops. 3t, and then to end soap, it's AP for what? AP is for always positive or always plus. And the square of three is nine, so the student's correct. All right. So that's uh, so that's the hard part. That's eighty percent of the problem, right? Okay. And as you've as you've observed, right, we can do what? Cancel. Yes, we can divide out. Okay, these divide out to one. Uh, it's good practice to put a one down there, you know. <laughs> okay. But in the end, we're basically going to get this trinomial piece: t squared minus three t plus nine. And by the way, we're hiding a restriction: t cannot be what number? What makes the bottom equal to zero? Negative three. Negative three. That's a hidden restriction. It's not critical. It's not like I take off 10 points on a test for that, but in order to make it perfectly equivalent, we should note that. All right. So we'll get the answers here. Yes. The answer to B is, it's that trinomial T squared minus three T plus nine with the hidden restriction that T cannot be negative three. Any questions? Okay. Well, uh, let me let me ask. Uh, 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 did uh, did you understand this, or are there any questions about B?
You know, I, I understand it now. I just didn't. I I forgot soap, so now it's perfectly understandable. Yeah. Which I understand. Be able to do another problem. Yeah, almost no one saw soap before today, unless uh, before this class, unless you took pre-calc before. So, so no, a lot of people. This is new. Oh yeah. Yeah, I took pre-calc, but it was like four years ago, so I don't remember that. Yeah, was it in high school? Yeah, in high school. Yeah, let me tell you, man. College pre-calc is nothing like high school pre-calc. No, no, this this is a challenging class. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're, we're good on B, and I have a, a, another request, 0.9D. All right. All right, so let's do 0.9D. Okay, uh, and I am still recording, right? Right, okay. Okay, so 0.9D, uh, these are the answers. Okay, so that's our first monster. Okay, so I'm gonna get my own, uh, do I have uh, my boards up yet? Okay, I'll, I'm gonna grab my, uh, my homemade whiteboards. Ah, uh, here we go. I get these off a of preview off my Mac. Okay, then the markup tool, all right. I took, a, I took a screenshot of a blank screen. All right, so our first monster. All right, let's do it. So first I'm going to do a substitution. I can do text on that. Let u equal uh, 5x squared plus one. All right, so then when I do the substitution, I'll call this star, right? So that thing I gave you, right, is going to be, and I'm going to apply the substitution. So we have this thing, u squared, right? It's now u squared times two. I'll be brave, I'll put the two out in front, right? We basically have two u squared in the upper left, two u squared minus, uh, okay, I'll, I'll write this, I'll write this out. So we have two x, times two times u, right? It's that thing that's being copied. Okay, two times u, and then times the 10x. All over, and that's, ah, u squared all squared. Playing some games with you there. All right, so I've applied the substitution, and I said the upper left was two u squared. All right, uh, let's do a little bit of cleaning. All right, so we have two u squared in the upper left minus, and remember, don't move numbers over here. This minus sign is a strong separator, all right? Let's do the constant. We have negative what? We have the two, whoops, we have the two times the two times the 10. What's twice, twice 10? That's going to be, four times 10 or 40. So the coefficient on that upper right is gonna be negative 40, all right? Then we have uh, what, x times x is x squared, and then the u. <coughs> okay, I'll keep the chat on. Um, on the bottom, what's the square of u squared? When you raise a power to a power or exponent, you do what to the exponents? you multiply them. Two times two is four. All right, any questions thus far? Any questions thus far? Okay, feel free to chat or speak if you have any questions. All right. Now, a lot of students are tempted to do some striking or dividing. Don't do that yet because we have two terms up on top. All right, so if you have more than two terms on the top or the bottom, don't pull any top-down canceling or dividing or anything. Let's factor. We're going to factor the top. Factor. All right, so what's the GCF on the top? Now, you can do it step by step. Uh, observe that we can factor out a two, okay? But that's not even the key thing. Here's the key thing. I'll move. You got to move your zoom toolbar sometimes. All right, so we have here, uh, you have here the u squared and you have the u. Which can I factor out? Which can I factor out? 
the u squared or the u. We can factor out the u, right, it's u to the first. We factor out the, um, the, the power of u with the least exponent. So, so the GCF is 2u basically, all right? And then what's the other factor? When we factor, we divide, all right. So 2u squared divided by 2u is just u alone, right? Because uh, we took out the two, uh, u to the second divided by u to the first is u to the first. Minus, okay, 40 divided by two is 20. The x squared carries over. U divided by itself is one. That all goes over u to the fourth. Any questions so far? Any questions so far? All right, now what can we do? Now what can we do? We have one term on top. It has three factors on it. What can we do now? Yoink. We can divide by u on the top and the bottom. Now there are different ways of looking at this. Uh, do you see what happens? So we divide u by u to the fourth, right? What are you thinking? What happens? This is for the class. Okay, we divide u by u to the fourth. What happens? Yes, very good. So when we look at it, u divided by u on the top is one. u to the fourth divided by u is u to the third. So that is correct. Now, for those of you who want to follow the rules of exponents, there's another way to look at this. This is u to the first, right? How do you, div how do you divide u to the first by u to the fourth? When you divide powers of u, you subtract the exponents. So you get u to the one minus four or u to the negative three. You agree, okay? u to the one minus four, that's u to the negative three. But what does that mean? That means one over u to the third. Which, which basically means that we end up with u to the third in the denominator. That's what this means. We end up with u to the third in the denominator, okay? Any questions there? That's a key step. That's a key step. So we have, uh, let's see, we have two times the quantity u minus 20x squared all over u to the third. Okay. Now remember, we're not allowed to divide in here because the u there is too deep in, right? It's too deep in there. Uh, we're not allowed to do canceling like that. Okay, that minus sign messes things up. If that were a times, that would work, but that's a minus sign, it's not gonna work. So at this point, I don't have much choice but to sub back, all right? Any questions? I'm gonna to go to my next screen. <laughs> okay, uh, for monsters, I gotta to go to two screens, I guess. All right. All right. We're gonna sub back. So we have u equals fraction bar two times. I'll put brackets here just to be safe. U is the quantity, uh, 5x squared plus one. This is overkill, but you know, that's that's okay. Uh, the quantity 5x squared plus 1. Although it turns out we're not going to need the parens. Okay, that's all minus the 20x squared. All right. Now, because these parens are in front, I don't need the parens. But let me warn you, folks. If we had, if it were the other way around, if it were 20x squared minus this guy, we'd need the parens, okay? But if you have stuff to the left of the minus sign, you don't really need the parens there, okay? You can see how it's different, the left versus the right. All right, and that's all over what? Uh, that thing cubed. 5x squared plus one, all cubed. And don't worry, you're not typically expected to cube this out. All right, so we're subbing back. Fraction bar, two, bracket. Okay, we don't need the parens. I'll, I'll even erase these at this point. Okay, now here's the thing, uh, just for form's sake, I know that when I combine the x squared terms, I'm gonna get a negative leading coefficient. So I'm going to choose to put the positive one first. Okay, make it look nicer. I'll put the positive one first, five x squared 
minus 20x squared is negative 15x squared. I think this looks a bit nicer. Instead of negative 15x squared plus one, although that is fine. All over this. And I think we're done here, right? There aren't even any hidden restrictions. In fact, I think the domain is all reals. There are no restrictions. The domain's all reals. Nothing makes that bottom zero. Um, I think that's that. Let me get the, uh, let's see the answers. Yes, I'm proud when even I get my own answers. Two times a quantity, one minus 15 X squared all over the cube of five X squared plus one. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> okay, I'm pleasantly surprised I didn't make a mistake. All right, of course I give partial credit. Any questions? And by the way, you have the right to multiply this out, but there's no need to. In fact, we tend to prefer the factored forms. Then it's very clear that we're simplified. Um, it's nice to know the domain. Actually, I think the domain is all reals. Okay, because, because if you look at the beginning, right, the only problem is if the denominator is zero. But wait a minute. Is there anything that makes 5x squared plus 1 equal to 0? It turns out that this has no real zeros. So actually, the domain turned out to be all reals. But it may take some time to realize that. OK, there are no hidden restrictions. There are no restrictions. Domain is all reals. All right. Any further questions? Uh, I have one. OK, uh, but by the way, uh, uh, about this, about this, any questions about this? Oh, no, no, sorry. All right, anyone else have questions about this? Oh, a uh, question from... Uh, uh, well, I mean, it, it's, since I'm writing out the solutions, of course you're welcome to write down what I write. I know I say, and I, I know I said in the syllabus, don't copy, but if you're conscientious enough to come to these Zoom sessions and I write this stuff out, I'm okay with you copying what I write here on your homework. That's cool, as long as you understand it, right? Um, so... Uh, if you write down what I have here, you should be getting full credit, right? If, if I'm telling you that I'm writing the solution. Okay, uh, wait, if we get a problem wrong and then, well, I'm assuming that, that when you turn in the homework, you're going to have the correction with my answer, right? So the idea is that, uh, let, let's say that you just have a few homework questions. If you come to me, uh, you know, in these homework sessions and I give you the full correct solution, right? Then, then you should be good in your homework. Uh, so, in principle, uh, uh, if a student can keep up with the material, the student should be able to do well on these homework grades because, you know, uh, if you need a solution, I'll give it to you. Um, it's a matter of keeping up with these things. I'm not here to trick you. <laughs> you know, if you're engaged and you're keeping up, you ask me questions. Um, yeah, I, I expect that I'll have a fair number of A's and hopefully a lot of students who understand what's going on. <laughs> I think it'll work. Uh, okay, now we had some other, we had, we had questions way up here. Okay, so I had questions about 0 0.16, numbers two and three. All right. I want to save these. <laughs> this is good work. I want to save these. Okay, so, uh, in fact, I'm, I'm going to, to remind me, I'm going to place on the outside. Okay. All right. <clears throat> I'm getting a request for uh, 0 0.16. Oops. Can we just do all of them for 0 0.16? Okay, uh, well, let me follow the order. Um, so uh, my first request were for two and three, then we can go to the others. Oh, there's another, like one, right? There's just three, right, or something? Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, why not? Okay, let's do all three. And if you're conscientious enough to, you know, stick around with me, then, you know, you can get this down. All right. So let's do uh, 0 0.16, number one. First, let's get the general model. A, uh, let me, how am I going to do this? Uh, I'll do this. All right. A is jointly proportional to, or varies jointly as B and the square root of C, I guess. <laughs> Wait, let me. Ahem. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So let's write the general model. In fact, I could I could probably type it. All right. A is okay. That's the constant of proportionality or variation. A common mistake is that students forget that there's a k there. That's the thing you have to solve for, right? So a equals k times b 
times the square root of c. Okay, so I gotta, I gotta write that, draw that. Uh, the square root of c. All right, so that's our general model. A is jointly proportional to b and the square root of c. So we have the model a equals k times b times root c. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to speak or chat in here. Okay, we're not done yet because I give you a data point and you can solve for k. All right, find the particular mathematical model. Uh, if a is 48, I'll go ahead and plug in right now. <laughs> if a is 48, k is the unknown we want to solve for, the constant of proportionality. b is what? b is 4? You should never write K4, uh, put the four in parentheses or put it in front, uh, and C is nine, but that goes under the square root. Any questions so far? Questions so far? The goal now is to solve for K. So we're going to put this in the bank. We do need the, the general model. The, my goal now is to solve for K, right? Okay, so we have 48. I can type this. Okay, so we now have 48 equals K times four, the principal square root of nine is three, All right? Four times three is 12. 48 equals 12K. And I'm being nice here. This is not always the case, but it turns out K will be an integer. K equals 48 divided by 12, that's four. Now I have the right to not make it an integer, but here it is an integer, K is four. It's a nice integer. All right, so far so good, any questions? But we're not done yet. What's the last thing we have to do? We're not done yet. We gotta take this, plug it in. Don't lose points by doing that easy final step, plug in. A equals, we now know what the value of K is, it's four times the B times the square root of C. Okay, I believe that is the answer. Yeah, A equals 4B root C. Any questions? Any questions? So we're getting the ball rolling on this. Yeah, this is tough for people. I mean, out of difficulty or time, a lot of students omit this stuff on their homework. They used to miss this on the old quiz. <laughs> okay, let's do the others. Um, so that's one, all right. Uh, let's proceed to the others. Okay. Yeah, so it's often the case in pre that, that when you see the solution, um, it makes sense, right? It's like, it's like a detective film, right? Oh, of course, it was the butler. It was always the butler or Kevin Spacey. <laughs> all right, 0 0.16, number two. Okay, it's a similar flavor, right? I mean, these are all the similar flavor. Um, let's get the general model. Uh, let's see here. W is directly proportional to, so k times the square of m, so m squared, and is inversely proportional to, don't write a separate formula, this is all in one formula here, w equals k times m squared, and is inversely proportional to the cube of n, so it's over n cubed. All right, any questions about that? Uh, you got to get that general model right first. If you don't get the right general model, then it's all messed up, right? Okay, now again, the goal is to find the value for K so we can get the particular mathematical model. Let's plug in. Okay, W is seven, K is still unknown. Uh, M is five, that's squared. I need a separator here. <laughs> all over. Uh, the cube of one half. Oh, I'm being sneaky here. Compound fractions, being sneaky. All right. So for a lot of you, it's going to be the pre-algebra, the, the, the fractions, no joke. First, what's the square of five? The square of five is 25. That's still times K. Ah, I'll give you a moment for this. What's the cube of one half? What's the cube of one half? Hmm. 
what's that? Very, very, ah, one eighth. Thank you. One eighth, not one sixth. But you know, it's really good to know the mistakes students make. It is not one sixth, it is one eighth. Okay, so it's good that we talk about the error as well. <laughs> All right. Okay, uh, different ways to look at this. So seven equals 25K. Here's one way to look at it. If I'm dividing by one eighth, I'm multiplying by its what? What's the R word? If I'm dividing by a non-zero number, I'm, good, I'm multiplying by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of one eighth? Eight. So dividing by one eighth means you're multiplying by eight. Okay. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> 25 times eight, eight quarters is $2, right? We think in terms of money, <laughs> okay? Eight quarters is $2 or 200 cents. 25 times eight is 200. Sometimes it takes money to figure that out. How do you solve for K? Divide both sides by 200. So sorry, we get kind of an ugly fraction here. We're two thirds of the way there. We're most of the way there. K equals seven over 200. Okay, do you first agree that that is correct? You agree with my work here? Yeah. All right, but we're not done yet. What do we have to do? Plug this number back in. Right, and you know what? It's gonna take a few steps because we're gonna get a compound fraction. All right, so we actually have a few steps here. But you're right, I gotta take this value for K and gotta plug it back in. Okay, uh, remember when we had Y equals MX plus B, right? We found M and we saw for B. It's a summer idea here. We gotta plug in that parameter, that value. Okay, uh, and I'm getting another board here. This was 27, 28. All right. Okay, so over here we have W, whoops, W equals, that value for K was seven over 200. Right now I'll put it in parentheses and put it in the upper left. Here's the value for K. M squared, M is still a variable in here, okay, over N cubed. Okay, so the, the data from the data point, we're not gonna plug in here, right? Uh, it's like Y equals MX plus B. In the end, you still have the X and the Y, right? We still have the M and the N. But wait, I will not accept this for full credit. The problem is that we have a compound or complex fraction in here. I don't like that fraction inside the fraction. If you have an exponent that's a fraction, that might be hard to resolve, but this we can resolve. How can we fix this? We can multiply by one creatively. What would you multiply the top and the bottom by? I would think 200. We're going to multiply by one in the form 200 over 200. Why? because these will now divide out to one. But we still have survivors. Okay, we still have the seven up here, the m squared up here, and the n cubed down here. All right. Uh, and the 200. You know, I sometimes forget that. Like when I'm rationalizing denominators, that 200 is gonna come in. Okay, so don't make that mistake. That 200 is also going to come in. <laughs> if you make that mistake, then maybe put these 200s like in front. All right. Almost made a mistake there. All right, so, e so W equals, okay, we still need the W. W equals, all right, the 200s up here cancel. We get 7M squared over, I almost forgot the 200. All right, the 200 goes somewhere. The 200 N cubed. And that is our full formula, the particular mathematical model. I think that's correct. W equals 7m squared over 200n cubed, right. Yeah, I originally wrote out this problem in two separate equations, so that was my problem. Yeah, yeah, I'll also do that. And I know that it's confusing from the wording, but remember for these problems that I, I only want uh, one formula, okay? So I know that the and might have confused people. I get that. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's only one formula. 
All right, uh, and then C. All right, so we're going to do three. We're number three, all right. Um, bu 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 okay, you give a flat 20% tip when you buy food at a restaurant. Oh, okay, it's a concept question. Uh, if you give a flat 20% tip whenever you buy food at a restaurant, are your tips directly or inversely proportional to your bills at the restaurant? All right, so what is your tip? Uh, uh, your tip is always 20% of, it's always 0 0.20 times the price or value of the meal, maybe P for price. Well, what kind of proportionality is it? This is uh, direct proportionality. Your tips are directly proportional to the bill. The Vi for K is 0 0.20. So it was a concept question. So things like uh, sales taxes, tips, flat taxes, uh, they tend to be directly proportional to the bill, your income, right? Things like that. All right. Any questions about that? Is it just directly proportional because you're multiplying the percentage to like the amount of the bill? Right. It's a product. It's K times P. Whereas inverse, inverse would be like K over P. Okay. Uh, my joke for that would be like, uh, uh, test score as a function of alcohol consumption. Although I don't know, some students do better. <laughs> All right, but that's inverse. This is direct. Okay, this is inverse. Okay, uh, I think we're saying it's 9.38 or so, right? Okay, I'll stick around, uh, but I'll also uh, come, I'll also be here uh, Thursday for to take questions and after class Thursday. Uh, anything else right now? Anything else right now? Again, this is the kind of thing we'll, we'll be doing on uh, Thursday. Okay, uh, 0 0.14, number one. Yeah, sometimes the hardest one is like number one, right? The concept one. A line has slope two and passes the point three comma one. Find two other points on the line. Okay, yeah, uh, because there were no examples in the notes. It was a matter of the concept. It's the idea of slope. Slope is what over what. This is the idea. I'll do another sheet. Slope is what over what? Rise over run. Yep. I'm going to draw some pictures here. Okay. Um, you don't need the axes, but I guess, you know, officially I should put the axes, right? Okay. So, um, so we have the point three comma one over here. All right. The slope is two. Okay. We think of this as two over one. All right. So starting from this point, how can I get another point on the line? Well, if I run one unit, this is not the scale, right? So don't worry about you know proportionality here. This is not the scale. Um, if I run one unit to the right, okay, uh, the x coordinate is now four. Here x is three. Here x is four. I know it's not the scale, but. You know. Um, all right, and then if I run one, how much do I have to rise to get back to the line? This is the idea of slope as marginal change. If I run one, I have to rise two to get back up to the line. All right, so this point has x coordinate four. Okay, the y coordinate of the blue point is one. If you add two, you get a y coordinate of three. And if we connect the dots, We connect the dots, all right? That point will also be on the line. To get another point, right, because I wanted two points, to get another point, 
you can run one and rise three again and think about what you might get. All right. Okay, so uh, any questions about this? Um, I could, if you wish, go further with this, but any questions? Any questions? Again, I'm using the idea of slope as rise over run. Personally, I'd have to draw the picture because there's no way that I could do this all in my head. I always mix up numbers in my head. I have to write it out. <laughs> slope is rise over run. And the idea of slope as marginal change. If you run one, how much does y have to change by to get up to the line? That's an idea in calculus. All right. Any more questions? Was that the last one there? Um, any more questions? And again, this is the kind of thing we'll do for much of Thursday, maybe about half of Thursday and after class as well. Until like 1030. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. You're welcome. Yes. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, so I like to think of slope as rise over run. I told you that here a line has slope two. So if I want to think of it as rise over run, I might want to think of it as two over one, right? Yeah. Uh, it's the slope of the fraction. And then I can think, well, hey, if I'm running one, then I want to rise two to get back onto the line. So for some students, it helps to think of two as two over one. Um, it seems like a simple step for some students, but that could be the breakthrough you need, right? <laughs> Run one, rise two. And again, you can get another point on the line by running one and rising two again. You can keep doing that. Uh, any other questions? Uh, or if you want me to wait for you to, you know, go through your homework, you can write wait. Um, I have a question about uh, question four. All right. On uh, point 14. Point 14, number four. Yeah. Okay. So I believe I talked to you about this before, about getting a different answer, but having it be pretty much equivalent. Um. This time, though, I feel like I, I'm not sure if it's equivalent, but I can't see any errors with my math. Uh, one moment. Let me uh, chat with someone privately. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, oh, no, this is a public question. How much time are we taking on Thursday? It's about half the day. Um, in fact, yeah, the thing is, normally I'd give quiz 1A in, over like an hour and 15 minutes. So I, basically, the question time will be taking the time of the quiz. So I'm thinking about an hour and 15 minutes in the class time. And then, so, so I'm going to start, so on Thursday, I'm going to start with doing the lecturing, the videos for 1.3. Okay, then take a break, and then about an hour and 15 minutes until the 9.30 p.m. end of class, and then I'm going to go beyond there up to an hour after class, up to 10.30 p.m. That's the idea. All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, back to number four. Uh, okay, okay uh, so find a point slope form for the equation of the line. Okay, okay now we have um, two points to pick from. The trick is the slope. Okay, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 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 what was your particular question again? You said that there was a so, particular, yeah. Yeah, so I I'm guess I'm wondering if the math that I did would still work. Um, for this sake, could we go with a 3-1? Uh, yes, you can, you can pick either point. Okay, so, uh, would you like me to go over the problem? The uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, and again, by the way, folks, uh, feel free to share screen if you wish. Remember, this is being recorded, uh, although I'll stop the recording if you want or pause it. Okay, so let's do this. Um, so we need the slope. The key thing that we're missing is the slope, right? Okay. Uh, as we keep saying, rise over run. Okay, now careful. It's change in what over change in what? Careful. Change in, it's rise over run, right? So it's going to be change in y on top negative one minus one. Oh, careful uh, i don't want to say y over x i want to say delta y over delta x yeah it's change in y over change in x what change in y over change in x the slope is not just like uh, one over three <laughs> okay it's change in y over change in x uh, there's a physics high school teacher in north carolina that really got on physics textbooks for not putting change in <laughs> all right so negative one minus one all over seven minus three. 
But see, the issue that gets a lot of people, don't switch these, okay? Because a lot of people think alphabetically. They think delta X over delta Y, okay? That's incorrect. Remember, it's change in Y over change in X. So two emphases, change in Y over change in X. Don't switch those. Also, it's change in Y over change in X. It's not just Y over X. That would only work if the origin were a point on the line. That's not guaranteed. All right. Anyway, the, what's the slope? It's uh, what? Negative two-fourths or negative one-half, correct? Is that what you got? Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I got. Uh, okay, let's, let's that. where my question kicks in. All right. Um, would it be acceptable for us to multiply that into the x minus 3? All right. So, uh, well, I mean, the, the point slope form is very straightforward in the sense that it's right there. So we have uh, y, I'm just in red um, or, or uh, green. All right. Hold on a second. Okay. All right. So uh, the point slope form would be y equals, uh, sorry, y minus, hmm. bring this down a little bit. So y minus y sub one, if you want to take the first point, y minus one, okay, equals the slope, negative one half. times the quantity x minus three, all right? So we're using the first point three comma one. So this is perfectly acceptable as point slope form. Um, and in fact, if a textbook were to ask, give me an equation for the line in point slope form, you really should stop here. Y minus one equals negative one half times the quantity x minus three. Is that an answer I give? Uh, right, y minus one, equals negative one half times the quantity x minus three. Now it's true that algebraically you could multiply in the negative one half, but then you'd be breaking the form. It would no longer be in point slope form. So as long I, as we have that, we should be fine. Yeah, you're good here. In fact, uh, if you were to um, go further and distribute, uh, an instructor might say, well, hey, you're wrong because you're not giving me point slope form as the final answer. Okay, okay. This is point slope form. So yeah, it's, uh, so don't uh, overthink it. It's right here. Of course, you have the right to use the second point as well or any other point you find on the line. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, yes. Uh, any other questions? Oh, uh, I, want, I want to say to everyone, delta Y over delta X. Okay. I know that some of you are chatting privately with each other, hopefully about math. Uh, I got to remember too, sometimes you're chatting to everyone. Sometimes it's a private. <laughs> so, so keep the, keep that in mind and, and just click on the person or everyone, depending on who you want to chat with. All right. Anything else? Can you do um, point 13 um, question four? Zero point thirteen number four. Right, this one over here. Right, that's a complete the score problem. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so we start that equation and we want to get it into standard form. All right. Okay, I assume that you want me to start from scratch, right? Okay, so we group together the x squared and the positive two X. Okay, plus group together the Y squared and the negative eight Y. Equals, I see this non-zero constant term, the negative 19, I'm gonna add 19 on both sides. Okay, uh, don't say move, say add. We're gonna add 19 on both sides. So we're grouping, we're grouping the X stuff, we're grouping the y stuff, and we have a non-zero constant term only on the right side. Okay. Interject if you have any questions, either by chat or let me know, all right? 
now we want to CTS. What does CTS mean? Complete the square. Complete the square. All right. So I'm going to copy this with spaces. <clears throat> okay. So the group x squared plus 2x. I'm going to squish this a little bit. Space. All right. Plus the quantity y squared minus 8y space equals 19. All right. So we're going to CTS. How do we CTS? We take the middle coefficient, the coefficient on x. The sign doesn't even matter. All right. What's half of 2? Half of 2 is 1. And what's the square of one? One. The square of one is one. But now wait, if I add one to the left side, what else do I have to do? Add to the right. Add one to the right side. Okay, we've got to bounce the equation. Okay, uh, any questions so far? You see what I'm doing? Any questions so far? How do we see TS here? Uh, I don't even need the negative sign, right? Half of eight is what? Half of eight is four. And what's the square of four? 16. 16. But if I add 16 to the left side, what else do I have to do? To the right. Yep, add 16 to the right. So we bounce the equation. Some, okay. students, might, uh, some students might say, do we subtract 16 on the left? That's fine, but you're going to end up adding 16 to both sides anyway. May as well just do this. Question? So basically, um, completing the square is just taking half of the x and y and then squaring them. Right, the coefficient, right. So you take half of the linear coefficient, right, the 2 here or the 8 or negative 8 here, sign doesn't even matter, take half and then square. Okay. Okay. Um, that's why I kept messing up in my videos. Uh, the quick explanation is that... Uh, Okay, if you have the square of x plus b, I finally got it right. Okay, the square of x plus b is this PST, x squared plus 2bx plus b squared. So if you want to complete the square, how do you get from the 2b to the b squared? You take half, you get b, and then square that, you get b squared. But that's the explanation as to why it works. All right. Okay, so I'm going to proceed. I assume that you'd like me to proceed. I'm going to proceed. All right. Now we're going to, fact this is very Christmassy, isn't it? <laughs> All the colors here. Um, we're going to factor these PSTs. We're going to factor these perfect square trinomials. All right. The, okay, x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's the square of what? It's going to be x. And you basically take half of that linear coefficient. Half of positive 2 is positive 1. It's that middle guy from the CTS process, assuming you take the correct sign here. All right? Plus the square of? The square of what? We're factoring the PST as the square of a binomial. This factors as the square of y, and then half the negative 8 is negative 4. That's the bottom line. Observe that the square of negative 4 is 16. Right. Equals, don't forget the equals. Okay, 19 plus 1, that's 20. 20 plus 16, that's 36. Okay. I'm spoiling you. I'm giving you a nice perfect square on the right side. It didn't have to be in which case you might need radicals. <laughs> All right, any questions about that? That's 90% of the battle, right? Uh, getting that ugly form is kind of a descending powers form in a way and putting it into standard form where we can now identify the center and the radius of the circle. Any questions? No, not right now. Okay, we're almost done, right? We have to identify the center and the radius. And the graph, I'm not, I'm not even worried about, but okay, careful. What is the 
center of this circle. I'll give you a clue. What makes the left side equal to zero? X equals negative one. Y equals what? Four. Over here, Y equals what? Four. Four, right. Okay, that's the center. It makes the left side equal to zero. Um, the idea is that the center is at a square distance of zero from itself. All right. Or a little, if, you look, if you like to look in terms of formulas, this is the quantity x minus negative one squared. So h is negative one. This is y minus k squared, k is four. What's the radius? Is it 36? Is the radius 36? It's six. Six, right, you take the principal square root six. Of course, that better be a positive number. If it's negative, you're dead. Uh, you have no graph. Six meters, whatever. <laughs> Okay. And I believe that, well, and also you can graph it physically. I'm not so worried about that, actually. Questions? This very Christmassy version of math. Questions? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Yes. Okay. So in chat, very good. Um, uh, do you remember the, uh, the parentheses, okay, because a lot of students forget those on work, okay? We do want to indicate the center as an ordered pair that corresponds to a point. Okay. I thank you folks for your hard work. Uh, I'm still around. Okay, any questions, chat, uh, or if you want to type in wait, I'll wait for you. <laughs> wait. Okay, uh, I have a request for 0 0.9 number three. Oh, oh, welcome, yes, all right. Okay, uh, let me save my work here. Zero point nine number three. All right. So at the risk of making you dizzy. Ah, yes. So rationalizing the numerator, correct? Rationalizing the numerator. All right. So this original expression, uh, in principle, I should copy down what it is, but uh, out of laziness, I'll say star. You should write down what the expression is. It helps you. Uh, star equals, well, I'm going to rewrite it here anyway. Four minus the square root of nine plus X all over the quantity X minus seven. The fraction bar implicitly groups the top and the bottom. So you don't have to write in this and this. Although, you know what? This may help us. I'm going to go ahead and keep this in. You don't need these, but uh, um, they may help you orient yourselves. All right, the goal is to rationalize the numerator. What do we multiply by on the top and the bottom? We want to multiply by one creatively. We're going to take the, do you know the word here? We're going to take the conjugate of the numerator, this radical numerator. So that's going to be four, yeah, four plus root nine plus X. That's your conjugate. Over the same old, same old. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 this one is the twin. Sorry, I can't help you with that on your Mac. Is that Siri? Oh, okay. Don't worry, that's Siri. All right, so we're multiplying by the conjugate of that radical expression on the top and the bottom. Okay, um, please let me know if there are any questions about this. All right, 
We're rationalizing the numerator. We're multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate of that top. All right. Let's go to purple. Equals. All right. So on the bottom, I'm just gonna I'm just going to write these. Don't foil these out. You're wasting your time. Okay. You're gonna you would waste your time multiplying this out. Leave it in factored form. We have the factor x minus seven and the factor four plus root nine plus x in the bottom. Don't bother foiling. You'll just have to go back and factor it back anyway. All right. Now on the top, we're going to use an algebra trick. We have a minus b and we have a plus b. How do you multiply? a minus b and a plus b. This is why we multiply by the conjugate. What's the product? It's going to be a squared what? a squared, this is the factorization of a squared minus b squared. Difference of two nice squares. Well, so what? I'll tell you, so what? That means that we're gonna end up with the square of four. I'll write that down in blue here. Oops. Okay, so we have the square of four, the square of that first guy, minus the square of, hey, this guy here, root nine plus x, that's all squared. Any questions thus far? All right, moving on. What is the square of four? The square of four is 16 minus, what's the square of the square root of nine plus X? Well, what's the square of the square root of seven? What would your answer be here? What's the square of the square root of seven? That's going to be seven. What's the square of the square root of nine plus X? We're not worried about domain right now. It's going to be nine plus X. But wait, this has more than one term. What do I need to put in? If I'm subtracting something with more than one term, I really better put what? I really better put grouping symbols like parentheses over all the stuff down below. Right. Um, by the way, uh, I want to ask the students, uh, do you think you're going to be good from here or would you like me to complete this? What do you think? I'll go ahead and complete it if... We need grouping symbols. Don't forget that. A lot of students make a mistake there. We're subtracting something with more than one term. We need grouping symbols. All right, so work that out. Equals. All right, uh, now to save time, I'm gonna write this. It's 16 minus nine minus X. How does that simplify? What's 16 minus nine? It is seven. Seven minus X over this thing over here. And don't forget this piece. I sometimes forget him. Wishful thinking. I sometimes forget him. Uh, four plus root nine plus X. All right. So far, so good. So far, so good. 
I'll put this in parentheses just for kicks. All right. Now, a lot of people aren't going to see this, but do you see what I can do? What can we do this? What can we do to this to simplify? What can we do? Give you a hint. Opposite How is terms. seven? Go ahead. Opposite terms. Correct. Uh, well, these are opposite factors, right? Seven minus X is related how to X minus seven. They're opposites. What do they divide out to? Careful. Negative one. Negative one. I'll put the negative one on top here, a one down below. So remember, seven minus X divided by his opposite, X minus seven, we get negative one basically. We're essentially done. I'll write this in red. Equals the opposite of, we normally put that opposite sign in front of the fraction. Uh, one over, and this ugly guy, we don't need the parentheses down here anymore. Four plus root nine plus X. Bear in mind, in this cancellation process or division process, we hit a restriction. X cannot be what? X cannot be what? X cannot be seven. Although that's the least of our worries. <laughs> if you get this, that's 95% of the battle. All right, and I think that's correct. Which one is it again? Uh, point nine number three. Right, the opposite of a uh, one over four plus root nine plus X, X does not equal seven is a hidden restriction. All right. Good conscientious group here. Uh, all right, so it's 10 away, but I'm still here. Any other questions? And again, this is the kind of thing we'll do on Thursday. Um, I take it uh, you're cool with that, right? I mean, this is the plan for Thursday as well. Um, I think this is very helpful. <laughs> Students tend to agree with me on that. I mean, what else would I do? <laughs> Address student questions on the homework. Um, professor. Okay. So I've, uh, I heard, I feel like I've heard you say something about the quiz. Is there going to be a quiz on Thursday? Uh, no, no. Uh, 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 people are asking where are my notes? Um, so my website, I didn't update my website for the pandemic. So it's still organized based on exams and quizzes. So what I told people was if they want to look for my notes, like my type notes for chapter one, they're going to look under notes for quiz one B. Uh, because uh, because there were because quiz one B used to be on chapter one, so I'm just oh. telling people where to find my notes. Oh, okay, I see. Right. Uh, yeah, I didn't have time to uh, okay. to update my website for the pandemic, but it's just a matter of knowing where to find it. Okay, and also I was wondering, so for um 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 Alex, that's what it is, or something like that. What right, Alex, A L E K S. That's for the extra credit. Yeah. Okay. So it's okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering uh, if it's strictly like um, extra credit or is it like a part of the... Well, right. So, I mean, a person could still get all thousand points in the class without Alex, and some people might, um, but uh, Alex is for extra credit. And also, it's just a good system. I mean, uh, it's, it's a good system that wraps around your brain. It's artificial intelligence. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so it, um, it looks at the kinds of problems you get right, the kinds of problems you get wrong, and it's a good way of training you on especially this chapter zero review material which is the hardest chapter in the whole thing because it's a lot of review, right? How do you factor? How do you, how do you rationalize, right? So it's a great system. I, I wanted people to at least uh, uh, dip their feet into it and see if they like it. Uh, and, and if they like it, they can go on and do other modules, even if it's not for extra credit. Uh, but the chapter zero is for 25 points extra credit possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. And the last question, so for um, participation, um, how, how do, could you remind, please, how does that work? Right, and I'm trying to remember, was it like 150 points or so? But, but here's the idea. Okay, no one's going to get hurt by that on the letter grade because I'm guaranteeing everyone at least uh, 90%, okay? So uh, 
Now, I hope no one drops dead, but someone could drop dead, and that person would still get uh, uh, at least 90% on that component, which means that it cannot hurt your letter grade. It's meant to help you. So, so for instance, you know, if you're like this, right, you're, uh, you're work with me um, uh, in the question sessions, you chat with me. Um, I guess for that purpose, you'd want to identify yourself by voice. But, but, uh, um, uh, but basically, if I know who you are, right, then that can help out. Uh, I look at the chats or, um, uh, you know, that can help. Mm -hmm. So you just uh, kind of see like who's participating, like something. Yeah, pretty overall participation, right? And that's like extra credit, right? Um, okay. Regarding the grade, uh, every time I finish a homework packet, I'll send out a new grade report. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I usually don't work with Canvas. I usually just straight up email people, well, here's how you're doing so far. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, right. Uh, and for Alex, you wanna check, uh, um, you know, what percent of the pie you have, what percent of the topics you've done. Right, and 90% is 25 points. Although you start making points even as low as, what, like uh, maybe 44% or something, but uh, uh, even if you do like like 50%, you're still getting a few points, right? Mm -hmm. It's a sliding scale. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and then someone's asking about 0 0.9e, okay? So I'll do that in the meantime. Everyone's got this, rationalizing. Uh, let's see here. Oh, uh, uh, let me, let me go ahead and save my work then. All right. All right, so looking at 0 0.9e, okay, uh, that's probably a monster. Uh, this could be the last or second to last problem we do. All right, uh, 0 0.9e. That's the, right, right. Okay, so that's like the second monster, right, okay. All right, so let's do that one. <clears throat> okay, first of all, uh, I'm going to start by a substitution. Let's start with a substitution. All right, let u equal the thing that's being repeated is that is that radicand that base four r minus three. Okay, um, let me know if this is the wrong problem. This is the correct. Yeah, point nine e. That's this one, right? Okay. Um, da, da, da. So let's, let's do the substitution then, all right? Over here, well, here's what I'll do. Okay, so star, the guy I'm giving you, right, equals, okay, I'm going to write this as 15r squared times the square root of u. So I'm going to rewrite this a little bit, all right? So we have 15r squared times the square root of u. Okay. Minus... I'll do some cleaning up over here, all right? So we have one big ugly term up here, all right, with a negative coefficient. Okay, so negative what? We have the five times the one half times the four. It's actually easier to multiply the one half and the four first. Half of four is two, and then two times five over here is 10. We have a negative sign. So the coefficient in the upper right is negative 10. All right, so we have negative 10 times, we also have the r cubed, and here u to the negative one half. All over what? Root u all squared. All right, question so far, question so far. All right, don't do any striking just yet. Um, okay, now, first of all, I have a question to the student. Uh, would you rather have me do the factoring technique or do you want me to use the compound fraction technique? Do you have a preference? Factoring or compound fractions? Factoring. 
Okay, so we want to write this as a power of u. 15 r squared u to the, if you have the square root of u, that's u to what exponent? The square root of u is u to what exponent? One half. One half, correct, u to the one half. Minus 10 r cubed u to the negative one half. And while we're at it, uh, uh, don't worry about domain right now. Assuming no domain problems, what's the square of the square root of u? Bottom line, what do you get? Assuming no domain problems. U. Plain old u, right? Okay, any questions so far? Again, don't do any canceling or dividing yet. We have two terms up there, okay? So you can't pull that stunt yet. We're going to factor. All right. Um, we could be brave or we could do it step by step. I'll go ahead and be brave. Although if you need to do it step by step, I understand. I'm gonna factor out the GCF. All right, 15 and 10. The largest thing that nicely divides both of those is five. All right. Now, the R squared and the R cubed, which would we factor out? It would be the R squared. But the most important thing, the thing that we really needed to deal with, u to the one half and u to the negative one half. In fact, in the end, it might not even be necessary to factor out the five or the r squared, but here we're gonna have to factor, all right? Now, which do we factor out? u to the what? u to the one half or u to the negative one half? We factor out the power of u to the least exponent. Which is the least exponent? Furthest to the left. That's the negative one half. So I claim that that is the GCF. Any questions? Any questions? All right. When we factor, we divide. All right. 15 divided by 5 is 3. R squared divided by itself, that leaves a 1. We're good there. Now here, it's a little tricky. U to the, we start with 1 half. We're dividing out u to the negative one half. When we divide powers of u, what do we do to the exponents? We subtract them. All right. And bottom line, what's one half plus one half? Well, I may as well just go ahead and strike this out. This ends up being a one. Uh, although, uh, what I'll do here is I'll do this. I'll, I'll point to it. That turns out to be a one. Uh, you don't want to do too much micromanaging. All right, but that turns out to be a one. Okay, minus 10 divided by 5 is 2. R cubed divided by R squared is R. This divided by itself, well, we're done there. All over you. Lots of work there. Are there any questions? I'll give you a moment to think about this. Okay. Are there any questions? Let's move on. All right. So we have 5r squared uh, u to the negative 1 half. times the quantity 3u, right? Because the exponent's 1 over there, minus 2r. That's all over u. And that is an r. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm recognizing that that exponent's 1. I don't have to write it down. But that's pretty nice. That's a lot nicer than what we had at the outset. All right, so we're making a lot of improvement. Okay, now what can we do? This is a factor of the entire top. 
That's a factor of the entire bottom. We can now divide. We cannot divide with this guy, right? He's too deep in there, but we can divide this by this. This is u to the first. So what happens? What's u to the negative one half divided by u to the first? When we divide powers of u, what do we do to the exponents? When we divide powers of u, what do we do with the exponents? We subtract, subtract correct. And do you know what negative one half minus one is? This is more side work. <laughs> negative three halves. Right, negative one half minus two halves, which was one, right, is negative three halves. But a lot of students need to work that out, right? Fractions. All right. Which, by the way, so this is just kind of a side work over here. Side work to the side work. Right? <laughs> u to the negative three, u to the negative three halves. How can we rewrite that as? One over u to the three halves. Good. One over u to the positive three halves. Correct. Bottom line, when you divide this by this, what happens? You bring it to the bottom. Correct. I'll put this in green. You end up with u to the three halves as a factor of the bottom. In fact, it is the bottom. And remember, you're not allowed to mess with this u over here. It's too deeply in there. The minus sign ruins things for us. So don't mess with this u over here. Any questions so far? So for the, um, were the three u, uh, where it's one over two minus parentheses minus one over two. So. Okay, wait, sorry, where are you again? It's um, it's the upper one. The oh, you're talking about this up here. Yes. Yeah. Right. I see you. Yeah. Yeah. What happened to the um to the one over two minus parentheses? Okay. Minus okay. So this is one half minus negative one half. That's one half plus one half. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's one half plus a half? One. It's one, which we don't have to write. You never have to write down a one exponent. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, that's confused. I'm yeah. sorry. I mean, you can, but then you don't have to do that. Okay. All right, any questions? Okay, so uh, would you like to continue from here or would you like me to complete this? So it's up to you. Um, I, I, uh, if you want, you can try to play with this or would you like me to continue? I'll go ahead and continue. All right, sure. So this will be our last problem for the day then. All right, and uh, then there's office hours and email and all that, you know. Um, and tomorrow, or no, no uh, Thursday. <laughs> Tomorrow's office hours. For office hours, try to email me in advance. All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Blue. Let me go to blue. Blue is my main color here. All right, equals. All right, uh, I'm gonna, all right, so we have that. <clears throat> I think Zoom will caption this. So if you want a captioning, I think Zoom will caption this on YouTube. All right, so we now have um, five R squared times the quantity three U minus two R. Okay, all over U to the three halves. So we agree up to there. Okay, now at this point, there's not much to do except sub back. We're gonna go back from U to 4R minus three. I'm gonna move my panels around here. One second. Okay, whoops. All right, so equals Let's sub back. We have five r squared, and it was what four r minus three, right? Yeah, four. Okay, so so bracket three. Okay, and then I'm subbing back. I'll put this in red. Uh, the quantity four r minus three. That's what u was. Back to blue. 
minus 2R. Uh, you don't have to color in your homework, but if it helps you, go ahead and use color pencils. Uh, all over, plug this in again. 4R minus 3, all in parentheses, and that's in the 3 halves. All right. Again, don't do any dividing here. We have two terms inside here. Don't mess with these top and bottom. All right. Basically, we're going to crank out the algebra on the top. So we have 5R squared. And we do what? D word with the 3. We're going to distribute it. 3 times 4R is 12R. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. And this is all time. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay, wait, wait. Okay, minus 2R, end bracket. Okay, or you could put parentheses all over that thing. 4R minus 3, all to the 3 halves. And I think we're just one step away uh, because we're not even hiding any restrictions. Uh, 3 fourths is the only restriction from the domain. I think we just have one step left. What's 12R minus 2R? So we have 5R squared times the quantity. 12R minus 2R is 10R minus the 9 and bracket over that power. Oops. 4R minus 3 all to the 3 halves. I hope that's correct. <laughs> I got to get the answers here. All right. Oh, wow. We've done a lot of work today. All right. Okay. You can see how, you can see how I didn't assign 10 or 20 of these. <laughs> this was plenty of homework. Oh, I'm proud of myself. Right. Right there. Right there. 5R squared and then 10R minus 9. I don't care if you put brackets or parentheses. All over. You do need grouping symbols here of some sort. 4R minus 3 to the 3 halves. Ah, wow. <laughs> All right. So let's call it a day. Uh, any short questions? Any brief short questions? Again, I do have office hours tomorrow, uh, but please email me in advance or at maybe 6.30 p.m. Uh, otherwise, Thursday we'll do more of this for at least half the class session, right? All righty. Thank you, sir. You're very welcome. Okay, uh, any other short questions before we sign off? Anything else? No, you're welcome, yes. Any other short questions? Oh yes, thank you for your, uh, your uh, hard work. <laughs> okay, questions. Thank you all for being here. All right, any questions? So uh, 15 seconds. Questions, questions? Uh, all right, thank you for being here. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>